I just got my first LHR GPU which is the RTX 3080 Ti. So in this video I will be reviewing this GPU for mining and we will go over its profitability on different algorithms and the overclock settings that you will need to use for optimal efficiency. I will also be covering some tips that you will need to know if you are planning on mining with the RTX 3080 Ti LHR. Hey everyone and welcome back to another mining chamber video. Before we get into the RTX 3080 Ti, I just want to go over a quick announcement for you guys. There has been a lot of new content that's been added to the blog miningchamber.com, many more new GPU settings has been added as well as mining software tutorials and more. There is also a new series for profit logs where we record the 3 most profitable coins to mine weekly on certain GPUs. This will turn into a weekly newsletter once we add more value to it, so feel free to check it out on miningchamber.com. Now let's go ahead and jump into the RTX 3080 Ti. The RTX 3080 Ti is an LHR GPU by nature, so while trying to mine with it you might run into some issues where you have to be picky with your mining software and you'll have to jump some hoops to be able to achieve the optimal efficiency. Now next, usually I would talk about where to buy this GPU and what's the profitability but this time let's mix it up a bit and go over setting up this GPU and mining with it first so we can see the results of the profitability later on. This way you'll be able to understand where the numbers are coming from and what does it require to mine at that level. The one that I'll be using for this video is a 3080 Ti iChill that was sent to me by Guntis from Mineshop. Any other model will also be very similar in terms of setting it up. These cards are thick. With a larger size than an average human's behind, I'm sure some people will have clearance problems trying to fit them in some chassis or even frames. You can find dimensions for different models on Tech Power Up if this is of any concern to you. The 3080 Ti's generally need two 8 pins for power, and these cards are most definitely power hungry, so do make sure that you properly connect them to quality cables or splitters. The way I am connecting it on my test bench is by using one cable from the PSU and some splitters. Now that is not the way that I recommend for mining 24-7 on these cards, especially if you are mining on a core intensive algorithm like Kapow. The safer way to power them is by connecting two PSU cables to 13080 Ti or three PSU cables divided by two 3080 Ti's, just as the infographics demonstrate. So now that we have the GPU in the test bench, let's go ahead and start testing right after a quick word from this video's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with many great genres that vary from all sorts of creatives all the way to even cryptocurrency. If you are looking into starting a YouTube channel of your own or improve your creativity, then you will most definitely find a class on Skillshare that will push your skills to another level. Or if you are brand new to cryptocurrency world and would like to understand more details about cryptocurrency, then enrolling in the Demystifying Cryptocurrency class will be a great choice for you. There will be a one month free trial for anyone who signs up with the link in the descriptions below. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first important step is downloading the right drivers. It took me so long to figure out that the newest NVIDIA drivers were screwing me over on getting my maximum hash rate until I had to try multiple other different driver versions just to get the maximum hash rate. So now it's clear that the LHR unlocking capabilities from different mining software were not working on my GPU. So for example, in Ethereum, instead of getting 80 to 90 mega hash, I was sitting around 44 mega hash, and it also applied that to the other algorithms that I will go over. So I ended up downloading the drivers from where the hash rate used to work as it should with LHR Unlock, which I ended up using drivers version 496.76. And if you have any driver version above that and you run into the same problem, then go ahead and use the link in the description to download the one that I have, and then you should be good to go. Now we're first going to be running these tests in Windows, and then I'm just going to slightly go over them in Hive OS. And the coins that I will be going through are Ethereum, Ergo, and Flux. So I'll give you guys the stock settings comparing to the efficient settings and then you guys can go ahead and use the overclock settings that I mentioned. And just remember overclock settings can differ from card to card. So if you try to use my settings and you keep on crashing then just try to tweak the numbers just slightly and reduce some memory clock or increase your power limit and then you should be good to go. Usually I try to give base settings where you can run them and then you can tweak them even further and make them more efficient. So these settings won't be the most efficient but you guys can work around and make it more efficient for yourself. 
So now let's go ahead and kick it off with Ethereum first. Now for Ethereum mining, we will be using the TRX miner. That is because it does support the LHR. Now you can use any miner that you want as long as it supports LHR. Just know that there will be difference between different mining software. What I would recommend is using TRX miner or G miner. So now mining Ethereum with stock settings, we are getting around 77 mega hash and we're pulling off of the wall about 320 to 330 watts. Now this system that I'm running on takes about 30 to 40 watts. So you can just assume that the GPU is taken around anywhere from 290 to 300 watts mining Ethereum. And you can also see the temperatures on the right side. So for the temperatures, we're sitting around 60 degrees for the core temperature. And then for the memory, it's going up to 100 degrees. Now this is getting really hot, so overclocking this card is very essential if you're planning on mining with it. So now that you saw the stock settings result, let's go ahead and overclock it and then start mining with it again. With the overclock settings that I have on the screen right now, which you can also find on miningchamber.com, the link will be in the descriptions below, you can see that we're getting about 84 to 85 mega hash and we're using 315 watts from the wall. So we've gained a small boost in mega hash as well as reduced the power by a little bit and then ultimately the best thing is that we reduced our temperatures by about 20 degrees. So that does make a big difference and it's going to be really useful especially if you have a lot of these cards mining. Now that is it for Ethereum, let's go ahead and move on to Ergo. For mining Ergo I will also be using TRX Miner and if we go ahead and run it in stock settings we will be getting about 226 mega hash and we will be using 315 watts. And then for overclocking it, we're using the exact same settings that I've used for mining Ethereum. That is because it's also a memory intensive algorithm, so you will need to max out your memory clock. And then you can see the results, we're getting about 274 mega hash and we're using 320 watts for just the GPU. So comparing it with stock, yes, you are using a little bit more watt, but you are getting a lot more mega hash in return. As for the temperatures, your memory is going to be the one that's getting hot here, just like Ethereum. So just make sure that you do give it enough cooling with your fan speed. And now we can go ahead and move on to Flux Mining. Flux is a little different than Ergo and Ethereum because Flux is core intensive. So Nvidia cards in general will perform very well here. But you will be using a lot more power just like you would be mining Ravencoin. And one thing you want to keep in mind when mining Flux is you want to make sure you use the right mining software. Each different GPU works better with a different mining software. With the RTX 3080 Ti, I had much better results using the Mini Z miner comparing to G miner or the other miners that are out there. Red Panda Mining just recently posted a video about this at the time that I'm publishing this video, so feel free to check it out for more information. But all you need to know for now, if you are going to mine Flux with your 3080 Ti's or a 3000 series in general, then I do recommend using the Mini Z miner. If not, you will definitely be seeing up to 50% less hash rate. So now if we go ahead and run it in stock settings, we will be getting about 105 to 107 solutions per second and we're going to be using 400 watts out of the entire system, which means 370 watts for just the GPU. So this goes without saying, undervolting and overclocking is definitely a must in mining flux. So after we go ahead and set up our settings, I am getting around 101 solutions per second and using only 300 watts. So it did become about 70 watts more efficient, which means generally your temperatures will go down with it. Now that is all the testing for the three coins that are most profitable to mine with this GPU. Now if you're planning on taking this GPU to HiveOS or a Linux based mining operating system, then you'll just need to change the overclock settings a little bit. All you will need to do is just put the memory clock as double, so if it's 1500, it will be 3000 in a Linux based mining operating system. That's because they use obsolete instead of offset, so that's why you'll have to put different settings. I also do have the settings on miningchamber.com, wherever it says OR and then it has a number after, that means it will be for a Linux based mining operating system. Now let's go ahead and talk about the profitability and how much money can you be making with the numbers that we just went over. But before we do that, I just want to quickly touch over the BIOS modding and the thermal pads part of the 3080 Ti. There is a way right now where you can BIOS mod your 3080 Ti with a 3090 BIOS and then from there you'll be able to unlock up to 100 plus hash rate on Ethereum. Now this doesn't work on every 3080 Ti so you might break your card and then you'll have to recover it. But if you do want to try it you can feel free to go for this. Just please be careful. 
And then there's also the thermal pads. If your GPU is getting too hot, you can go ahead and replace your thermal pads with better ones. For example, you can use Thermal Grizzly, which is known to have really good quality thermal pads that can reduce your memory temperatures by a good amount. So now for the profitability of the 3080 Ti, I'm going to go ahead and go to whattomine.com and then put all the results that we were able to get. So like that, we can get as accurate as possible. Just keep in mind that these mining profits always changed by the day, so you'll always have to double check and see what the profits are the time that you're watching this video. Now I will have these profitabilities linked in the mining chamber article. When you go to the 3080 Ti mining settings, you will see here the 3080 Ti mining profitability. So when you go ahead and open this link, you will get an up-to-date profitability based on the settings that we have covered. The hash rates will slightly be lower here since it's auto-generated, but you can still go ahead and click on that and you'll still have good amount of information there. So now if we go back to whattomine.com, we can see here mining Ethereum, we will be able to get about $4 a day without paying electricity. And then with electricity at 10 cents per kilowatt hour, we're going to be getting only $3.27. So per month, you're making almost $100 with mining with this GPU. And then if you look at the other ones that we've covered, so we have here Ergo, which is getting you around $3.55, and then Flux is giving you around $3.36. Now Flux is a little special because you can get parallel assets, which means you will be getting more than just this, but I will be covering that in a different video. So now in general, looking at these numbers, you can average about $100 a month mining with this GPU. But then we also know that this GPU is very pricey. So let's go ahead and go over where to buy this card and whether it's worth buying it for mining or not. And that will not be a financial advice. It will just be my conclusion. So if you want to go shopping for this GPU, you can find it on Newegg, eBay, as well as Best Buy and many other sites out there. So finding stock for the LHR card won't be such a hard deal. Right now, if you want to buy it new from Newegg, you will be spending about $2,300 up to $3,000 in tax just to get the RTX 3080 Ti LHR. Which means if you want to go ahead and count how long it will take you to break even at the current profits, then let's say you make $100 a month, then that will take you at least 22 months to break even. And that is if you're able to buy it at $2,200. And like I said, these numbers do change. Some months you'll be making a lot more crypto and some others you'll be making a lot less. But just a rough estimate, I would say you'd at least need one year to break even on an LHR card at this price. If you look around on eBay and the used marketplaces, maybe you can try to get it for $1,900, maybe $1,800 if you're lucky. And then there you'll have a much better deal. Now with the price tag and the profitability, it's honestly not that attractive of a deal to buy an LHR card and mine with it. But if you want to get one for your own PC and you also want to mine on the side, then it's not a bad deal for you. So that is it for the profitability as well as the prices to buy this card for. Now for the final conclusion, I don't think this card is a great deal right now for mining. Like I said, if you want to buy it for your personal PC, then it would not be a bad idea. But if you just want to build a full rig of these cards, then it might not be such a bright idea. Now that wraps up the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And let me know in the comments below if you have a 3080 Ti, what you're mining with it. And if you don't, are you planning on getting one? Next up, I will be covering the 3070 Ti LHR. And then I'll be covering a couple more GPUs from there. So thank you all again and if you're new here make sure to hit that subscribe button and if you enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.